reading from John 20 continues. <coughs> but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Beloved friends of Jesus, on this bright Easter morning, I want to ask you to consider a question. Where have you seen Jesus? Maybe on this morning, or in this week, or in this past month, where have you seen Jesus? When I worked in children's and youth ministry, I would ask this question quite often. Where have you seen Jesus? And I would get all kinds of responses as they learned to watch for Jesus around them. I might hear about Jesus keeping them safe as they came to church, or about Jesus making such pretty dandelions grow in their yard. I might hear about Jesus helping them get a good grade on a test, or how Jesus helped them be brave when they had to sing in a school concert. At Vacation Bible School, I might hear about Jesus showing them love through their leaders or bringing them new friends. On mission trips with high school students, I might hear about Jesus offering them lunch or cold water at the work site, or Jesus helping carry a heavy load from the van. Kids can get pretty good about spotting Jesus at work around them. And as usual, adults can learn a lot from children when it comes to faith. Because there's something that I absolutely believe to be true. When we look for Jesus, we see Jesus. And we are able to proclaim, along with Mary Magdalene here in John 20, I have seen the Lord. I've been doing a lot of thinking about Mary Magdalene this week, which probably is not much of a surprise since she is a significant person in the Easter Gospel. And it seems that here in John 20, on the first Easter morning, her words and actions give us a good example of what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. Here is this woman, this friend and follower of Jesus, one of his disciples, really, although not one of the twelve. And the gospel tells us that while it was still dark, she came to the tomb. And so the first thing we learn from Mary Magdalene this morning has to do with darkness. As disciples of Jesus, sometimes we will be setting about on our mission while it is still dark. There's an outline in your bulletin um, if you wanted to follow along. That's the first point. Sometimes we will be setting about on our mission while it is still dark. It wasn't just the darkness of the early morning that Mary was dealing with. I mean, not to be more dramatic than necessary, but she is additionally dealing with an existential darkness. Jesus was dead. She had seen it with her own eyes, heard his final words with her own ears. He was crucified two days before a cruel execution. He was gone. But now this is Mary Magdalene. Two weeks ago in this very sanctuary, we read together about her costly act of love and great devotion. 
as she poured oil that cost a whole year's salary on the feet of Jesus, filling the room with a sweet smell and demonstrating her profound understanding of who he was and what he was here to do. She was a woman of faith, and Jesus commended her for that faith. But still, here she is on Sunday morning following three harrowing days of grief and darkness. It happens. Our faith, our belovedness before God, God's goodness itself, does not protect us from the darkness. We will sometimes find ourselves moving ahead while it is still dark. And that's what Mary was doing. She had a task. Yes, she was grieving. Yes, she was confused. Yes, she didn't have any clue what she was going to do now. But there was something she needed to do for Jesus, and she is still a woman of commendable faith and devotion. And so while it was still dark, she headed to the tomb. The tomb was empty. Now, we know why the tomb was empty. But put yourself in Mary's sandals for a moment. Assuming someone has stolen the body, and wouldn't that just be like them, she runs to tell Peter and another disciple. And before too long, all three of them, these people who love Jesus, were standing around with lots of questions and several clues. That part wasn't unfamiliar to them, at least, the questions and mystery about something to do with Jesus. In fact, this might be one of the ways we identify with the disciples in the Bible the best. I know most of my time as a disciple of Jesus has been filled with questions and trying to grasp at the fringes of holy mystery. And that's a good thing. It sometimes doesn't seem like a good thing. Sometimes that might just seem like more darkness to navigate the questions and the mystery. But for me, it's a good thing because it's a reminder that I am not God. That there is a God who can act apart from my limited imagination and expectations. And it's a good thing because the questions, the mystery, the not understanding right now, the not knowing how this could possibly turn for good, well, this leaves room for surprise. As disciples of Jesus, point number two, there will be no end to mystery, questions, and surprise. There will be no end to mystery, questions, and surprise. One of my favorite hymns is, I was there to hear your warning cry. It's fairly new, but it's been in the newer hymnals and songbooks put out by our denomination. I like it best on baptism Sundays, but sometimes I just listen to it to help me get through a Tuesday. <laughs> it's God speaking, and the chorus says, I was there to hear your warning cry. I'll be there when you are old. I rejoiced the day you were baptized. See your life unfold. The hymn traces a journey of faith through wonder, rebellion, change, joy, sorrow. And then the last verse says, When the evening gently closes in and you shut your weary eyes, I'll be there as I have always been with just one more surprise. Just one more surprise. Because life with Christ includes surprise, thanks be to God. Of course, you know this. You too have been surprised by God. You're at the end of your rope and you figure this is it. You'll never be able to fix this, whatever this is. You have questions. How are things ever going to be okay again? How am I going to be able to make it to the end of the week? God, there are you. And then someone shows up with exactly what you need. Enough food to put on the table, enough money to pay the rent, enough encouragement and support to complete the task, enough grace to restore a relationship that you thought you were losing forever. Surprise! God was there all along. God has not forsaken you. God was where you couldn't possibly see him yet. The disciples are standing before an empty tomb, 
trying to piece together clues that involve a stone rolled away and carefully placed linens. They're standing on the very edges of the best surprise ever. They've had a rough couple of days. They probably asked each other over and over again, where is God? How is this ever going to be good again? What was this all about anyway? And after Peter and the other disciple leave her, Mary is still at the tomb. And she's weeping because she has the biggest questions of her life right now. So she gathers her wits. She bends down to look into the tomb to see what the other disciples saw. And she sees something she was not expecting. Two angels where the body of Jesus once had been. And they have a question for her too. Women, why are you weeping? They've taken the body of my Lord, she tells them, but I don't know where. And then she's not alone in the garden anymore. A man she supposes is the gardener, but we know is actually Jesus is there. And he has questions for her as well. Women, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Can we just stop and relish that scene for a moment? The Son of God knows for whom she is looking. He knows that in a moment she is going to get the biggest, best surprise of her life. And so he comes up behind her and he says, Hey, what's going on? Who are we looking for? Was it you, Mary wants to know? Did you take him? Just tell me where he is. Maybe you didn't realize that Joseph said we could lay him in his tomb, but we had permission. Please tell me where he is. And then Jesus says the one word that changes everything. At this word, the darkness is not dark to her anymore. At this word, the questions quiet down. The feelings of helplessness and hopelessness subside. Jesus says her name, Mary. And suddenly, she sees him. Teacher, she exclaims. And Jesus releases her to be the first post-resurrection preacher. Go to my brothers, Jesus tells her. Proclaim the good news. And she does. She finds the disciples and she delivers the first Easter sermon. I have seen the Lord. And this is important. Those are important words. Those words are words the world longs to hear. I have seen the Lord. Some of you know that I love theology. <laughs> I love talking about sacraments and liturgy and church calendar and the high holy days and the low holy days. <laughs> I'm reading a book about the difference between how the Western church and the Eastern church understand the resurrection of Jesus this week, and I just am totally geeking out about that book. And if anyone wants to talk about it after church, sit by me at fellowship. <laughs> I love to talk about that stuff, and maybe you find it interesting, too, or maybe some of you just humor me for 45 minutes at a time as I teach a class. But here's the thing. As hard as it is for me to say it, <laughs> that stuff is important at some point, but it is not the good news that people long to hear. It's not as personal, as relevant. It doesn't move people like, I have seen the Lord. I ask kids to tell me where they have seen the Lord because I want them to get used to watching for Jesus at work in their lives and then sharing about it. A lot of you have seen Jesus at work in your lives. You've lived long enough or you've gained enough perspective to glimpse what God was up to all along. You've walked in the darkness and you have met Jesus there, and he brought you back to the light. You've wrestled with questions and mysteries and have been able to look back and see the clues that show you that God was there all along. Even when it seemed that he wasn't, even when you were so overwhelmed by the unknown, you didn't think there was any way out. But then there was. Now, maybe you're here today, and you aren't quite sure about Jesus. 
or about church or about where you fit or maybe you have a lot of questions about how this whole Easter thing works. That's a perfect place to be in a faith journey, and I mean that sincerely. I think that. Your questions or doubts or uncertainty are not a hassle. And if you want to talk about it, I'll just say that I would be glad to talk about it with you. Just write, let's talk, on the slip in the bulletin. Give me enough contact information to reach you and slip it in the offering plate in a few minutes. I'll be in touch this week. Or if you just can't wait, meet me at that side door at the end of the service or in the fellowship hall in a little bit. Today's a good day to look for Jesus. Or maybe you've been surprised by Jesus too. He has said your name. He's called you to bear witness. You have seen the Lord and you have a story to tell about that. The world, this community, your church, we need your story. Go, like Mary Magdalene, and tell Jesus' brothers and sisters about, that, about it. Tell them all that you have seen and heard. Glory be to the Father, and to the risen Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen.